Hello YouTube. This is my second video. Maybe my last. I don't know if videos are really my thing. But there's some things I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, I'm smoking some Royal Yacht here in this uh, Kamoi. Oh, yeah. oh, camera's kind of far away. Okay. okay. Uh, and I was just sitting here reading uh, the DSM-5, which is a diagnostic and statistical manual for mental disorders. A lot of interesting stuff in here. Um, it's always fun to try to diagnose yourself. But um, we're going to talk about some other things here today. But first, the housekeeping. Um, we do get a lot of dust around here, and so housekeeping is important, especially with all these dogs. So we'll clean this off. Um, <clears throat> stuff all over the place here. Okay. Um, so today I want to talk about aging tobaccos. And that's something you'll hear a lot about on the internet. Um, people like to age tobaccos, both to improve the flavor and also um, people are worried about price increases in the future. I can understand. Um, and. It, you know, if you look at these internet forums, people aren't sure should you store it in the jar, in a mason jar, or store it in the tin. And, you know, I don't like to compromise. I think we should try to do it both ways. And you're kind of hedging your bets. Um, store it in the tin and in the jar. There's some problems, though. Now, here's a tin of Dunhill London mixture that I'd like to age. And I've got a mason jar, which everyone on the internet says is the best thing going. Some people like Kerr jars, but this is a, you know, this is a ball jar, but it's the same idea. Um, but the tin simply will not fit in this jar. Uh, but there's, there's a way you can fix this so that you can both age in the tin and in the jar. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to talk about that today and show you my process. Uh, first thing we need to do is kind of secure this this uh, tin here because we're going to have to squish it a little bit uh, to get it to fit in there. Uh, so we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to wrap some tape around it. And, you know, as the... It'll still remain sealed, but as we begin trying to get it to fit within this jar, um, you know, there, there could be some issues and I don't want it to bust open. Um, and oh, we now we need a little extra equipment here. Oh. Got some newspaper here uh, to protect the surface. And the first thing we want to do is um, put a screw uh, going from the top to the bottom, and, and that will help help keep this jar uh, from falling apart. Um, I like to use a center punch to get the hole started. Okay, now we've got a good um, starting point. Now, many of you guys uh, who are worried about aging tobacco and whatnot. Uh, are probably worried about the government taking over. And, you know, maybe, maybe that's a real concern. Um, a lot of you guys like to live off the grid. And, you know, I, I'm not going that far, but I do like to be eco-friendly. And so we're, to uh, install the screw here, we're going to use a Yankee screwdriver. Now, many of you guys have probably seen a Yankee drill, which is much smaller. Um, but this has forward and reverse. Uh, great tool, people don't use them much anymore. I'm not sure why, because they really are effective. Uh, so, we can release the collar here. Got our drywall screw. Now, oh, I should show you, this, this adapter here, uh, these sort of have a proprietary bit system. And you can get this adapter from Granger which allows you to use standard hex size bits, um, which is a good deal. So we'll get this started here. And we'll bet it in forward. 
Okay, there we are. Totally through the tin. So that's the Yankee screwdriver. Okay. Now, we have our tin taped up, it's screwed together, it still won't fit. So there are a couple things we can do here. Uh, we can grab a hammer. Now, I'm a geologist, so I have a rock hammer, or uh, actually, you know, this is a, a bricklayer's hammer as well. I guess it depends who you're asking. Um, but you, know, you can use this. I like to use something with a little bit more weight here. Uh, mini sledgehammer. Now, oh, well, safety first here. Put on my safety glasses. Um, let's see, I don't have safety glasses for you, but here, we can cover your eyes with this. Don't look. Now, so we're going to begin pounding the tin. And of course, we've taped it, so it's, it's not going to open up. The steel is going to stay in place. Do a little on each side. Oh, now, I, I mean, this is partly to protect the table, uh, but you know, also the larger mass here helps. So, what is it? Force uh, F equals ma, right? Force equals mass times acceleration, I think it is. Uh, but so this is providing mass. And we're going to pound this down a little bit. Now, in order to check if it's going to fit, I've, I've already set up here these dial indicators. And, okay, well, we, we can see this is much too thick. So we need to do a little more work. On the other side. Now, normally I'd have a ball peen hammer available to get some of these, these, these tight edges, but I couldn't find it today. Okay, we're, we're getting close. Now, you'll see a little tobacco may, may fall out. I, that, that, that's normal. It's okay. Okay. Looks good. Will it fit in our jar? No. Needs a little bit on the top here. Okay. Let's try this again. No, no, still. So. Okay. Let's try this. I think just a few more, a few more blows here. This is where the ball peen hammer really would be nice for just fine tuning the shape. Okay. So now it fits. Now, um, I guess more housekeeping here. Um, made quite a mess. Uh, so we've got the tin ready. Now um, we've got to get the jar ready. Oh, I got tobacco in my wine. Okay, well, you can take these off. Uh, a lot of people talk about how to clean a jar. I sometimes put them through the dishwasher. One thing I've found is <clears throat> that, you know, this is something your dog can help with. And <clears throat> so if you can get the dog to lick the inside of the jar, it'll clean it right out. Now, sometimes you need a little incentive. So here I've got some, this is Giant Eagle brand, sort of an off-brand peanut butter. And so I'm just going to put a little peanut butter in here and then give it to Lexi. Lexi, will you clean that up? So she's going to work on that. Um, and we can do the same thing with the lid here. Just put a little bit of peanut butter there. Did you finish with that? You can have that. Oh! There you go, sweetie. Clean that up. Okay, so now, you know, she just did a little part. Um, it, you know, normally I, I would put some more peanut butter here and give the dog a little more time. Uh, now, one of the other things we know about aging is that evidently oxygen uh, is the enemy. And so we want to remove as much 
much oxygen as we can from this jar. So to do that, we can go back to high school science class and remember if we add a little baking soda, well that's a baking soda here, and a little vinegar, this will create a chemical reaction. Now I think you can see it fizzing. Oh, oh goodness. Uh, normally you'd use clear vinegar. I, I only had this um, red wine vinegar, but it, the same reaction. Uh, so I, I believe we filled up this jar with carbon dioxide. And we can test that here if we grab a match, because we do like to test things. And I think if I lower the match in here, it should go out. Okay? Did I? I, I hope, hope you could see that there. Um, so we've got this full of carbon dioxide. And so now we can place our tobacco tin in there. And Lexi, have you finished yet? Lexi has finished cleaning the lid. So we can place this on and seal it. I, I guess we don't need the rock anymore. This rock is rather heavy. Um, so now we have <clears throat> our tobacco here in this jar full of carbon dioxide, so it can age. Uh, but we really do want to make sure that there is a good seal. Uh, there are a number of ways you can do this. Um, for this little rim area here, I like to use standard window glazing compound. And, oh, my screwdriver thrown over there, but use the end of this bricklayer's hammer. Now, I'm sure all of you guys have this around for glazing your windows. Here I have. Uh, now, I've already mixed this uh, bit up a little bit before the video, but uh, and what we can do is just work it into this crack here. And this is going to seal the surface. Just do this quickly. I know we don't want this video to be too long. Okay, so now we've got some of this glazing compound in here. And, and of course, most of you guys who have glazed windows know you need to let that dry you know, a couple of days before you paint. But so we have this part sealed. Now, for this bit between the lid and the glass, uh, I like to use a different way. Um, oh. yeah, see, I, I've made a mess here. It's definitely messy. Um, best way I've found is to just use a little bead of caulk. And I've got some um, Weathermaster sealant. It, it doesn't matter what brand. I think, um, you know, if you're storing your jars inside, you can probably even use a cheaper brand. And so I'm just going to cut the tip off here. And break the seal. <clears throat> now, you know, generally, it, it is good to have a, uh, a caulk gun here that, that has these two sides. Um, and investing in a good caulk gun is, is I think, a good investment. Um, certainly helps weather sealing your home. Um, you know, very eco and economical. So we'll make sure we've got some caulk flowing here. And now we can just lay a bead in this little crack. It's, it's hard to keep this steady here. No, normally you'd like to have this on a Lazy Susan or something. Uh, so that it's easier to to rotate as you're laying this bead down. Okay. Now I forgot to get some water, uh, but normally if you wet your finger, it can help smooth that surface. Here. Oh no. Now. Oh. Well. Uh, here, I can just cut this. Use this. And, and just clean this up. Okay, so now <clears throat> we've got our tin 
it's fully sealed. Uh, but you know, other people on the internet have said that your tobacco really ought to ought to breathe some. Uh, so you know, we've done all this, but I think we ought a little, you know, let it breathe a little. And so here, I'm just going to use this uh, nail set. Pop. Okay. So now we've we've got our tobacco totally sealed, but we we've, we've allowed a hole here uh, for the for the tobacco to breathe. And so we're all set. This is how you age tobacco. Um, it's important to store it properly. Tobacco is a big investment, and you want it to last. Uh, okay, guys. Thanks for listening.